drives wars, men, and nothing at all? Women, Andrew Tate would say, but the real answer is caffeine. It is daily by 265 million people in the United States. Caffeine is the most popular drink in the world. And about a year ago, I quit drinking it for about a week, which wasn't exactly the easiest thing for me. You see, like you probably watching this video, I really enjoyed a good old cup of joe in the morning. However, after that challenge, I severely decreased my caffeine consumption to about half, maybe one cup daily, because it made my mom happy. But today I'm gonna do the unthinkable. For the next seven days, I'm deciding to quadruple my caffeine intake to the maximum recommended daily dosage of 400 milligrams. Also creating about four to five cups of coffee because I'm here for a good time, not a long time. But seriously, don't try this. And if you're wondering why, well, you're about to find out. How do you start your morning? Is it by taking 15 minutes to get out of bed or waking up at 6 a.m. for a morning run? For me this week, my purpose of leaving my warm extra large twin door mattress is a cup of coffee that has my name on it. Which means that it's day one right now, and if you can't tell, I'm already cracked out on caffeine. So far today, I woke up, got out of bed like an NPC, and then immediately started to brew some coffee. I swear I'm not addicted, I can stop anytime I want. I then went to class, drank some more caffeine. Which brings me here, having already doubled my caffeine intake for the day, and it's not even 12. But that does probably mean I'm going to have a killer of a workout. You know, they say you get headaches going off of caffeine, but right now I'm experiencing exactly the opposite. But there's this little thing called ibuprofen, which helps clear headaches and has caffeine in it, which kind of kills two birds with one stone. So it's going to be overdosing on that. Good morning, everybody. I made a mistake. I woke up late today. And as a result of waking up late, I had to go straight to class and had no time to brew a glorious cup of caffeine. So now it's 11 o'clock and I'm struggling. And so I was with being nearly halfway done with this challenge and about two minutes, 30 seconds into this video, my motivation was dwindling, fit, findling. Fondling. But even worse, I was starting to pick up on some of the worst side effects I would have throughout the seven days. You know, the problem with drinking coffee all day compared to, to other caffeinated beverages such as energy drinks and whatnot is the fact that your breath gets so bad. I'm constantly having to chew gum, down some mouthwash, eat some toothpaste. It's not a great sight. Not to mention the fact that when I'm doing homework or watching a podcast, I'm jittering all the time. Like about a year ago when I actually did drink a ton of caffeine, I always had this like leg tap thing drove everyone around me crazy. Now I'm like redeveloping it, which is not good. But even with my struggles and pain, I was still able to develop a beneficial morning routine to keep me productive throughout the day. Here it is, I wake up severely sleep deprived and a bit dehydrated, but immediately get the sudden urge to do as many push-ups as I can. Once I finish up, I then brush my teeth while simultaneously start chugging coffee and washing it down with crust branded mouthwash. Really cleanses the palate. I then need to fulfill my newly found caffeine addiction by chucking a monster in my shower. This usually is enough caffeine to get me out the door for an 11 a.m. class because my dependence on caffeine has only gone up throughout the seven days. I mean, you would think my overconsuming of caffeine to the extent that I have these past few days, I wouldn't be tired whatsoever, but in fact, I'm experiencing exactly the opposite where the only way that I'm able to maintain my energy levels and not get tired is to consume yet another caffeinated beverage, which is kind of scary to think about, but luckily we only have tomorrow and two more days proceeding of this caffeine bender. And with continuously wasting away by day five, I was getting disgusted with the person who I had become. Before, I was this innocent, pure-hearted, good Samaritan listening to Disney music and eating all my vegetables. But now I don't even recognize myself. I'm running on no sleep, barely any food. I don't even know why or what happened. For some reason, I lost my shirt, sleeping in every day with purely caffeine flowing through my veins. My body was approximately 78% energy drink at this point in time. I mean, I was downing White Monster energy drinks for fun. So I started to do a little bit of research on the effects that caffeine has on your body. It didn't look good. 
Now the thing about caffeine is it doesn't just give you energy. In fact, it just inhibits your ability to feel tired. Which when I found out this, I realized that caffeine is actually a whole lot worse for you than I actually thought. Now I'll put a whole bunch of links down below in the description to where I found all of my information on how bad caffeine is for you. And let's just say you may or may not see me quitting caffeine for 30 days or forever in the near future. But as tempting as that sounds, I still have over 1,000 milligrams of caffeine to consume over the course of the next two days. Now I may be jittering a whole bunch more than I usually do, but my focus levels have been off the charts. But the real question is, do I truly think that consuming this much caffeine is worth it? So not only does caffeine start a slippery slope of bad habits, but it also affects other portions of your life, like sleep, for example. I was soaring through the sky or being in the deep depths of hell, I just wasn't acting like myself. If I was high on caffeine, I started to stutter my words more often and just wasn't able to keep calm in stressful situations. On the other hand, I just purely wasn't a fun person to be around when my energy levels crashed. You see, I just felt like a completely different person throughout these seven days, which ultimately shows you that although your life may be stressful, you don't need a supplemental drug to continue on throughout your day. So the real message to take away from this video is to take away caffeine from your life. Through all the pros and cons, I truly just don't find it more beneficial than good quality sleep combined with good nutrition. Ultimately, living a healthy life will give you the energy you seek through caffeine. And with a few more caffeinated beverages down the hatch, it was at last. I'm around 300 milligrams of caffeine deep right now and low-key kind of tweaking, but somehow we made it to the final day with zero heart problems and also zero sleep. By the way, if you guys are one of those types of people who just supplement sleep with more coffee, immediately call an anonymous therapist hotline. They'll take care of you right away. So the plan right now is to go back to the dorms, grind out as much homework editing as I possibly can, which most definitely will be exhilarated by yet another cup of coffee. So I'll see you guys there. So uh, let's, let's get right into it. Now this right here is my last cup of coffee and I ain't mad about it. Now the total number of caffeine I've drank throughout the entire week is 3,150 milligrams, coming out to 440 milligrams per day. But through all the sleepless nights, dehydration, and pounds of caffeine, my mind was changed. And hopefully, maybe, I changed yours as well.